This is Balaji Rao from Department of Radiology. In this video, I'm going to explain how to identify surface anatomy of the brain on CT and MRI scans. Surface of the brain is very convoluted and complex. It has got multiple sulci, which are nothing but depressions resembling valleys, and gyri, which are like ridges on surface of the brain resembles hills. We have to understand sulci and gyri are concepts and there is going to be a lot of variability from right side to the left side, from anterior to posterior direction and from one person to another person. In order to explain the surface anatomy of brain, I'm going to start with the superior surface, then explain the surface anatomy on midline surface, then on the lateral surface and finally on the inferior surface of the brain. When looking at the axial images, look at it like a clock face. So from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock position, we have interhemispheric fissure. The next gyrus is the superior frontal gyrus. The next sulcus is the superior frontal sulcus. The next gyrus is the middle frontal gyrus. Then we have the precentral sulcus. Notice how the superior frontal sulcus joins the precentral sulcus. Then we have the precentral gyrus. Then we have the central sulcus. Notice how the central sulcus as a notch or a knob resembles like Greek alphabet omega. This is a very important concept. This corresponds to the hand motor area on the homunculus. Posterior to the central sulcus, we have the postcentral gyrus. Then we have the postcentral sulcus. Anything anterior to the central sulcus is the frontal lobe. Anything posterior to the central sulcus is the parietal lobe. In the parietal lobe, there is a deep gash which runs from 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock position and from 9 o'clock to 7 o'clock position. This is called as intraparietal sulcus. Superior to that is the superior parietal lobule and inferior to that is the inferior parietal lobule. Also notice that the intraparietal sulcus laterally joins the postcentral sulcus. In order to proceed further, we need to look at the surface anatomy on the midline image. In the midline, anatomy is either co-curvilinear to the corpus callosum or perpendicular to it. So paralleling the corpus callosum, we have the callosal sulcus. The next gyrus is the cingulate gyrus. The next sulcus is the cingulate sulcus, which is parallel to the corpus callosum two-thirds of its way and suddenly makes a 90 degree swoop. And this part of the cingulate sulcus, which extends to the margin of the brain, is called as pars marginalis. And just anterior to it is the central sulcus. So this is going to be the precentral gyrus and this is the postcentral gyrus. As we go down along the pars marginalis, it makes this U-shaped curvature. The part of the brain which it encloses is called as paracentral lobule. There is another deep gash on the midline image which is called as parieto-occipital sulcus. It separates the parietal lobe from the occipital lobe. There is another deep fissure called calcrine sulcus. The part of the occipital lobe which is between the calcrine sulcus and parieto-occipital sulcus, this triangular part of the brain is called as cuneus. The part of the occipital lobe which is inferior to the calcrine sulcus which resembles like a tongue sticking out is called as lingual gyrus. Between the pars marginalis and the parieto-occipital sulcus we have this uppercase H-shaped fissure which is called as subparietal sulcus. Another important concept on the midline sagittal image is when the parieto-occipital sulcus and the calcrine sulcus join they extend down and form like a lazy y this fissure is called as anterior calcrine sulcus it separates the lingual gyrus from the continuation of the cingulate sulcus now let's identify some of the structures which we have seen on the midline sagittal image on the axial image as we move from inferior to superior direction the pars marginalis is seen as a deep cleft in the midline starting from inferiorly it appears like a drooping mustache and as we go a slice above it appears like a straight mustache and on most superior images it appears like a smiling mustache notice how it forms like a basket this is called as pars basket as seen on the midline sagittal image the central sulcus is anterior to the pars basket and it dips into the basket the post central sulcus is bifid and holds the basket as we have already seen, the intraparietal sulcus runs from 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock position and from 9 o'clock to 7 o'clock position. The part of the intraparietal sulcus which is in the occipital lobe is called as intraoccipital sulcus. Notice how the intraoccipital sulcus is parallel to the interhemispheric fissure. We can also identify the parieto-occipital sulcus. It appears like a bifid or like a fishtail. 
along with the intraoccipital sulcus it forms like a broken upper case m anything anterior to the parieto occipital sulcus is the precuneus of the parietal lobe posterior to the parieto occipital sulcus is the cuneus of occipital lobe now moving to the lateral surface of the brain we have this deep fissure which is called as lateral fissure or sylvian fissure the sylvian fissure separates the frontal and parietal lobe from the temporal lobe the most lateral gyrus in the frontal lobe which we see is the inferior frontal gyrus it appears like a molar tooth or a triangle the other name for this is the triangular gyrus it is divided by the most anterior part of the sylvian fissure into orbitalis between the division of the sylvian fissure we have the triangularis then we have the opercularis above the inferior frontal gyrus we have the middle frontal gyrus which is zigzag almost like a mississippi river which joins the precentral gyrus notice how the precentral gyrus forms like a hook which is held by the postcentral gyrus this is called as hook sign again an important concept which will help you to identify the precentral gyrus and the postcentral gyrus just below the sylvian fissure we have the superior temporal sulcus above that is the superior temporal gyrus and below that is the middle temporal gyrus now let's identify the inferior surface of the brain starting with the most anterior coronal image we have the interhemispheric fissure then we have the olfactory sulcus between the interhemispheric fissure and the olfactory sulcus is the gyrus rectus or the straight gyrus lateral to the olfactory sulcus we have the orbitofrontal gyrus which is sitting on the orbit this is divided into four parts by the orbitofrontal sulcus which resembles the upper case h into anterior medial posterior and lateral orbitofrontal gyri as we move posteriorly on the coronal image we can identify some of the structures which we have already seen superior frontal gyrus middle frontal gyrus inferior frontal gyrus superior temporal gyrus middle temporal gyrus and inferior temporal gyrus inferior temporal gyrus is separated by lateral occipital temporal sulcus from lateral occipital temporal gyrus this is separated by collateral sulcus from parahippocampal gyrus parahippocampal gyrus is separated by hippocampal fissure from hippocampus So let's revise some of the concepts we have just learned starting from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock position we have the interhemispheric fissure the next gyrus is the superior frontal gyrus the next sulcus is the superior frontal sulcus the superior frontal sulcus joins the precentral sulcus just posterior to the precentral sulcus is the precentral gyrus then we have the central sulcus which has this notch which corresponds to the hand motor area resembles the greek alphabet omega posterior to that is the postcentral gyrus then we have the postcentral sulcus which is bifid this is called as bifid postcentral sulcus sign notice how the precentral gyrus is much thicker than the postcentral gyrus then we have the pars basket the central sulcus dips into the basket and the postcentral sulcus holds the basket then we have the intraparietal intraoccipital sulcus which joins the central sulcus then we can identify the parieto occipital sulcus by its bifid fish tail like appearance to summarize sulci is a concept apply the various concepts which was explained in this video in a systematic fashion use the ones which are concordant this will help you to identify the surface anatomy of the brain important thing is keep on practicing every time you look at a ct or mri image of the brain this will help you to refine your skills of identifying various parts of the brain thank you